Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at the Cast Iron Cookware channel, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. If you saw episode 6 of Hunting Cast Iron Cookware in the Wild, then you saw where I picked up this little number 8 Birmingham Stove and Range Century Series Dutch Oven. We're going to be getting this piece ready for use, and we're going to be cooking taco soup in it. And we're going to be doing that coming right up. First thing we're going to do to get started is we're going to get our water hot. Apparently this thing has never been used and it feels like there's a little bit of a residue, a coating, an oily coating on it. This is a Century Series. You can tell by the descriptive number in the lid. Number dot eight, ten and five eighths inch. That's Century uh, having this kind of descriptive numbering on it. Also with the dimples, they're in a straight line. They're not random like the Red Mountain. And the casting is a little rough. It's not milled like some of the Red Mountain and even some of the Century Series. It's a little rough on the inside too. It's not been milled. Also, made in USA. Birmingham Stove and Range, you'll have a pour spout on the Dutch oven. Okay, we're gonna give it a really good scrubbing with the SOS pad and then dish soap. We're gonna dry it as quickly as we can and apply a thin layer of oil to get it ready for seasoning. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the oven at about 250 degrees. And then when it gets warm, I'm gonna take it out and wipe it down really good. And then we're gonna put it back in the oven for our first round. As you can see, I have plenty more pieces in here than just this one. Whenever you're seasoning cast iron cookware, you want to make sure you have a full oven. When it hits 250 degrees, we're going to come back in here and wipe it down. Make sure everything is coated good with a very thin layer. Okay, it's already got up to 250 degrees and it's hot. And it's really, and it's really oily. So we're going to take our wipe. We're going to take our first cloth that's infused with buzzy wax. And we're going to kind of wipe it all over just to make sure that it is still completely covered, which I'm pretty sure it is because it looks really shiny all over. And this piece is a little bit of a rough casting because it's one of the newer Birmingham Stoven Ranges, probably made in the late 80s. And make sure that you use an oven mitt or some kind of heat resistant glove so you don't burn yourself because 250 degrees is hot enough to hurt. Okay, we know it's covered good, so we're gonna take our wipe down cloth from our buzzy kit. We're gonna wipe it down and make sure it looks dry. Even though it's not, there's still a microscopic layer. I've heard some people say, go ahead and wipe your seasoning oil on and then do your best to wipe every bit of it off until it looks like it doesn't have any on it. We're gonna put this inside the oven face down at 500 degrees for one hour. Okay, it's cooled off a little bit. And it looks really nice. A little bit on the hot side. Not bad. Okay, we're going to complete that cycle again. We're going to go ahead and wipe on our buzzy wax or whatever cast iron seasoning that, that you prefer to use. And after we get it wiped on, we're going to go back and wipe it off with a wipe off cloth. Just remember the Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. So we're going to wipe it on, get it covered good. We're going to wipe it completely off till it looks like it is dry. 
Put it back in the oven, face down or upside down for one hour at 500 degrees. Uh, Buzzy Wax says to use their product at between 480 and 500. You can do 490 if that's what you want to do. That's what I do occasionally, but my oven temperature is kind of odd here lately, so I'm going to go ahead and go with 500. So we're going to do that for one hour, and we can copy this for four, five, six times. I've learned with the Dutch oven, uh, it's good to go ahead and add extra layers. Uh, one reason why, because you're probably going to be making things like soups in it that has tomato uh, sauces that has a tendency to work against your seasoning. You're also going to be uh, using your lid which gets wet and it has a tendency to get rusty if you don't have plenty of layers of seasoning on it. So go ahead and do extra on your Dutch ovens. Okay, we have about five rounds of Buzzy Wax seasoning on this little Birmingham Stoven Range number eight Dutch oven that we got. And I'm telling you what, it's turned out really good. It's nice and nice and pristine. The casting on it's a little bit rough because it was made probably in the late 80s. Uh, the inside's a little bit on the rough side, but it still turned out nice. It's a pretty little pot. Never been used before, but we're about to use it. We're going to be making our taco soup in just a few minutes. And uh, just as a note for this piece right here, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned. There will be a giveaway video on this piece right here. So just keep your eyes open for it. And we're going to be making our taco soup in it coming right up. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to heat up our cast iron. We're going to start it off on low to medium to let it warm up evenly. It'll take a few minutes, so just be patient. And once it starts getting warm, you can check by feeling of the edges. When the edges start getting a little bit too hot to touch, then you can go ahead and crank it up. The sides of our Dutch oven is getting really warm. You can still touch it, but I can feel the heat coming up the sides. So we're ready to brown our hamburger meat. We're going to be using two pounds. Okay, we can go ahead and crank our heat on up. Go ahead and crank our heat on up to about medium to high. One good thing about having a Dutch oven that sits flat, it's not continually spinning on you. Now on a glass top, it's going to slide around, but we got a nice, even surface where the heat is coming through fairly even. Now you can use chicken if you would like. You can use one pound of hamburger meat. I kind of got overboard a little bit by putting two. And we also want to make sure we keep stirring and uh, keep cooking until there's no more red. Just to make sure everything is browned completely. At this point, if you would like to pour the juice off, you can. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in. We're also going to be adding two cups of chopped onions. We're going to stir these in and we're going to keep cooking until the onions start to turn clear. Now we're using a number eight Dutch oven. I probably have enough ingredients for a number 10. Uh, so I got a little overboard, but it'll work as long as we don't get too carried away. Okay, our onions are starting to turn clear. We're going to go ahead and add our taco seasoning mix. We have one package of El Paso taco seasoning, which is about three tablespoons. You can use two packs. We're also going to be adding our ranch dressing mix. 
one package, which is about three tablespoons as well. We're gonna stir that in until the meat gets infused with the flavor from the seasoning. Make sure it's covered completely before we add our next ingredients. Everything is getting stirred together pretty good. Looks like the seasoning is mixing with the uh, meat. The side of the Dutch oven is starting to get a little warm. I think I need to be using an oven mitt at this point. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add in our Rotel tomatoes. We're gonna be putting in two cans at 10 ounces each. There's one, and there's two. We're gonna go ahead and stir these in. We're gonna make sure that we have these mixed in well. And now we're gonna be adding in our beans. We have pink kidney beans, and we have drained the liquid off 15 and a half ounces. Also gonna be putting in a red kidney beans, one can, 15 and a half ounces, and we drained the juice off of that. Just the beans, no juice. I don't think there's any difference between the pink or the red for its flavor. We're gonna add our black beans in now and we're gonna drain those too before we add them in. I think it's 10 and a half ounces. We're going to stir all this together, kind of mixing a little bit here and there as we add the ingredients. Now we're going to add a can of whole kernel corn with the juice drained off of them as well. Then we'll get those stirred in. We're also going to use four cups of 100% vegetable juice. There's two cups and two more. Okay, we're just about to run out of room in our pot. I don't think we're going to be adding in any more ingredients. We could have gotten by with one pound of hamburger meat and probably one can of beans. We're gonna let this simmer until it comes to a boil. Remember, we're still on medium to high heat. So it'll come to a boil in just a few minutes. Just be careful not to let it boil over because we don't have any room. And man, that is starting to look good. This is about the right amount for a number nine or number 10 Dutch oven. Probably on the verge of being too much for a number eight. And remember with cast iron, when you get to the point where you're ready to take it off, just cutting it off won't stop it from boiling. So once you cut it off, you might have to stir it just a little or even remove it from the eye completely. And still do a little stirring. And we are ready to eat. Now we had something I didn't know about. Jalapeno flavored cheese curls. We're going to put these. I'm going to put mine in the bottom. If you like, you can put them on the top. Get a little soup to go along with that because it is taco soup, right? Get us a little cheese for this. How about a, a dollop? A few onions. There we go. Well, one thing I can say about it, 
the Dutch oven may not have been big enough for as much as I made and also my bowl is not big enough mm -hmm. yep I can tell you right now I need a bigger bowl now if you would like you could add some sliced jalapenos to the mix maybe some mushrooms or even some crushed red pepper I'm all for that but everybody here doesn't have the desire for that much spice tonight so I just left those out but you can do what you want to and dress it up how you want to so so go ahead and add to it and make your own recipe and enjoy I just want to say I hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and I promise I'll have more of them coming thanks again for watching the cast iron cookware channel